With fragments, you can share fields across different operations in GraphQL. For example, when you want to render a list of employees on one page, and you want to render a specific employee on another. Without fragments, you'd have to retype many of the fields. With fragments instead, you can just define them once, and you no longer have to retype them manually. In this video, I'll show you how to effectively use GraphQL fragments. I'll also show you how to use them together with unions and interfaces. To show you how GraphQL fragments work, I've set up a new GraphQL API using Stepsim. In my GraphQL schema, you can find one query which returns a list of employee details. And to get this data in here effectively, I'm using a ECMAScript function to return an array of objects. And using this ECMAScript function in Stepsen, you can actually use this to create powerful mock APIs. That way you don't have to connect this GraphQL API to another REST API or GraphQL API database or whatever data source you're trying to use. Instead, you can just define the data you like to use right in here. And to deploy this API, I will just run steps and start, and this will give me a GraphQL playground that I can use to interact with this GraphQL API. When you follow the instructions in your terminal, you can find a link to the steps and dashboard where you can start interacting with this GraphQL API. When you first open a dashboard, it will automatically generate a query based on the contents of your schema. And you can use this to try and get the data using this GraphQL query. In here, you can see that we have a query called employees that returns the fields age, name, salary, and termination date. As you saw in the GraphQL schema, and you can look it up right here, we have a type called employee details, but it's actually implemented from a interface called employee, which only has the fields name, age, and salary. So what we can do instead, we can also create a fragment that represents these fields as these are the most common fields to use for an employee. And the termination date is only an optional field. As you can see that not all the results from our GraphQL API will have a value for the field termination date. And this isn't part of our interface. So instead let us create a fragment for maybe the employee interface. interface and for this fragment we will use we will say fragment on employee because this is the interface and then we type the field age name and salary as these are the fields for our employee interface and then in our query we can use this interface and we no longer have to type these three fields in here so we'll be using the three dots to sort of spread this value. And then when we press the execute button, we should still get the same result. But this time we've used a fragment, meaning that if we want to use this query somewhere else, so let's say you want to have a second query. I've just showed you how to use fragments to share fields across different operations, but there are more use cases to fragments. For example, when you're using a GraphQL query, or a different operation that returns a union type. With a union type, you can create an operation that returns multiple types. For example, maybe one result in your list will be of a certain type, while a different result in your list will be of a different type. If we look at our example with the employees, we might want to return a list of current employees and former employees through the same operation. So let's head back to VS Code and make these changes to our GraphQL API. In VS Code, we see that we have a type employee details, which implements employee. You can see we have a termination date, which is actually only needed when we have a former employee. So instead of having the interface employee, let's create a type for the current employee, which returns the name, age, and the salary, and then also create a type, oh, let's do it like this. We can actually keep the interface, so let's create a type called current employee. And this type will implement employee and we will return the name, age, and salary. But let's say we also have a former employee. And this former employee will also have a termination date which our current employee doesn't have. And the type employee details, we can actually delete it. And instead, we're going to create a union 
And this union employee details means that a result returned by the employee's operation could be of type current employee or it could be of type former employee. So when we save this and we would go to our GraphQL playground, we actually don't see any differences because we're still returning the same list. To actually make a difference here, we need to set a type name. And with this type name, GraphQL can determine if your response, so if any of these objects in this array will be of type current employee or former employee. And we will use the field called underscore type name for the current employee. And we're going to reuse this field for, we're going to reuse this for every result that doesn't have the termination date. If it does have the termination date, we will use the type former employee instead. Like this. And once we save this, our GraphQL API will be redeployed to steps in, meaning that we're now able to access it from the steps in dashboard. In the steps and dashboard, we need to make sure to refresh our GraphQL schema so that we have the new GraphQL API that is using this union type instead. As you can see here, we're already getting an error because we might have to use an inline fragment. And if you look at this example where we have the hard-coded fragment like this, which is its own entity, we're going to use an inline fragment instead. We no longer have to say it's on employee because GraphQL will already know just looking at the operation. So we're going to use this inline fragment and we're going to say on current employee, we will display the name, age, and also the salary. And then when we have a former employee, this former employee and then we want to display the name the age the salary and we also want to display the termination date so let me copy paste that and put it right here like this and then we can just run execute again and based on the type name the GraphQL API can find, it's gonna return you the fields that you requested. So if the type is of a current employee, it will return name, age, and salary. If the type is of a former employee, it will return name, age, salary, and the termination date, which only is available for former employees. As you've learned in this video, you can use fragments to share fields across different operations. You can even use inline fragments to work with unions and interfaces. This is particularly useful if your operation will return a union type that can consist of multiple different types. For example, when there are many differences between the types that are returned by your operation. If you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button below because we'll be posting more videos around cool stuff you can do with GraphQL.